All right, we're now being joined uh, by some student athletes from St. John's. Uh, just a couple procedural things. There's no video recording or flash photography allowed, but there are video distribution sites back the room, hang a left, uh, the exit back here straight across the hallway, or the tunnel in the hallway across the hall. Um, got a question? Raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around. We just ask that you wait for the mic just for our transcription purposes. Um, and we just ask that uh, when you get the mic, you identify yourself by name and affiliation and just direct your question to a specific student athlete. And we will uh, open the floor for questions. Yep, you're on the right. Mark Herman from Newsday. Shamari, this is what you've been waiting for. What have these past couple of days been like and what's today <clears throat> like, just when you're actually here? I um, mean, it's definitely a blessing to be here. I mean, this is something I dreamed of. And I mean, I'm just glad to share here with my brothers and uh, definitely try to go f far in the tournament. Right here on the right. Shamori, as a kid who grew up in New York, what does it mean to you to be part of St. John's team back in the NCAA? And when you were a kid or in high school, did, did, you, did you follow St. John's at all in terms of seeing how their progress uh, was before you got here? Uh, so, like, my freshman year, I'd, like, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really focused on, like, None of that, but I mean, I mean, I had to, cause I mean, this is where I'm at now. So, but I mean, it just, it just feels so unreal. Right here on the left. Marvin, uh, how rewarding is this for you as a senior to be going to the NCAA tournament? Uh, it's definitely rewarding. Um, you know, I'm just thankful, you know, that my senior season isn't over and that my career isn't over, and that you know I've uh, been able to, you know, be with these guys up here and be able to accomplish you know, a feat of, of bringing uh, St. John's back to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. To follow up on that, uh, how much are you guys trying to salvage this opportunity, you know, knowing that you're the last team in the field? Um, you know, even though we're the last team, you know, um, we're, we're in. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't want to just, just be here and, and be happy to be where we're at right now. Um, you know, we're really focused and, and locked in on, you know, making a run, and we feel like we have the, the talent to make a run. Right here on the left. For, I guess Marvin and Mustafa, you guys have both played in the tournament, Mustafa, more recently. How much do you think that experience can help? Marvin, can you answer that first, please? Um, I think that experience, you know, helps us a ton. Um, uh, being a, this being my third time being in the tournament um, throughout my career, uh, you know, every game, um, it's a whole new season, but every, every game is, you know, it's, it's your last game. And, um, you know, you really should be overcome with energy. Um, there should never be a point where you're, you know, you're tired or focused or worried about being tired. So I think, you know, having Justin Simon, Mustafa, you know, two guys that have played and been, like, been in this environment, um, I think it, you know, it's going to make a big difference. Mustafa? Uh, the way I look at it is, is at the end of the day, it's basketball. You know, being here, you know, having the experience of coming here is good and all. But um, the way I look at it is put the ball in the rim. I mean, it's, it's been the same since we was little. So just go out, have fun, enjoy the moment, put it in the rim. Right here on the right. 
And I'm sorry, I, I said a bad tone. We're supposed to identify ourselves. Mark Herman from Newsday. Mustafa, uh, can you describe, because oh, I know you took a different route here, but what St. John's meant to you when, when you were growing up? But what, what sort of impact did, did that have on you? Did, what, how much did you know about St. John's? I was a Kentucky fan growing up. <laughs> um, I was Kentucky, then UConn. Um, I didn't know too much about St. John's uh, growing up. I guess, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. What did you know? What, what, made, what makes you, what made you, ultimately made you a St. John's fan? Uh, I wasn't really a St. John's When I was little, I wasn't really a St. John's fan. Um, I was, I was all, I'm from Connecticut, so UConn was it for me. I was at UConn games. Uh, that, was, that was it for me. But what do you like about it now? I love it. Uh, coaching staff, I love my teammates, I love the university, the program, everything about it. Uh, we'll go here on the right by the pillar first. Hey, Roger Rubin from Newsday. Um, from Marvin Mustafa, are there things that you have shared with the guys who haven't been in this environment about what it's like being in an NCAA tournament? Like, what are the, what are the things that maybe they ask you about that you tell them, or the things that you volunteer to help them understand what this is going to be like? Mustafa, um, can you take that first? Oh. Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, I think just the biggest thing is just letting everybody know it's basketball. This is something that we've been doing since we were little. I mean, this, you know, as far as the pressure and all that stuff goes, you really don't want you to get inside them lines. It's, it's whoever's in front of you. You know, you're not really worried about the crowd, the media, any of that. It's, it's basketball. Marvin? Um, and, you know, really just what I was just preaching, uh, waking up this morning is just living the moment. Um, you know, like Stop said, you don't want to make it too big. You don't want to make it too big. At the end of the day, it's basketball. And, um, you know, most important thing is just living in the moment and making sure that, you know, no matter what, that next morning when you wake up, whether it's win, lose, or draw, you gave your all. Right here on the right. Mike Ficarra, New York Post. Uh, Justin Marvin Mustafa, this is for all three of you, without embarrassing him too much, but can you all talk a little bit about what it's like to play with Shimori, especially when, when he's really on top of his, of his game and what it means for, for you guys um, when you guys are playing well and he's playing well? Marvin? Well, you know, I, I, you know, I talk about Shamar all the time. Um, you know, great player, um, really great player. Um, but for me, you know, he helps my game so much because he draws so much attention that you know I, I get a lot of open shots because of that. And it's you know it's, it's it's great playing with him. You know, he's he's a scorer. You know, but he's he's one of those scorers that's you know not he loves the pass, loves making the pass, loves making the that fancy play. So, um, you know, he's been somebody that I've enjoyed playing with over these three years, and um, I've enjoyed watching him grow. And you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part. Um, of this whole thing and this whole dynamic of, you know, him being able to stay home and, and you know, get St. John's back into the tournament, you know, being the hometown hero. So, you know, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a blessing playing with him. Justin? <clears throat> uh, yeah, what Marvin said, uh, it's been a blessing playing with Shamari. Um, I, when we, we all, me, Marvin, and Shamari came here together. Um, watching him grow um, has been major for our program and our team. Uh, he's, a, he's an incredible playmaker. Um, Great hands on, on defense and uh, active player. Like I said, just see him grow is, is major. Mustafa? Pretty much the same thing, you know, as, as Justin said, the piggyback. I haven't seen, before I came here, it was uh, high school was the last time I seen him. And um, just to see Shamari grow over the years and then for him to be in the tournament now, it's the first time and we want to win it all for him. You're right here on the aisle. Marvin, what do you think the last few weeks have been like for Coach? You know, he loses his brother and now he gets the school he played for into the tournament. He, you know, I know he doesn't like talking a lot about himself, but what, what do you think the last few weeks have been like for him? I would say, you know, it's, it's the perfect, uh, perfect balance of, you know, low, as low as you can be and as high as you can be. Um, you, know, um, you know, going through what Coach is going through is something that I couldn't imagine. Um, I couldn't imagine losing one of my brothers. Um, you know, even one of these guys up here, you know, it, it, would, it would eat me up inside. But uh, Coach is a tough guy, and he's, um, I think he showed, you know, the type of mental toughness that he has to be able to, you know, go through that. And, you know, we weren't really playing great basketball, you know, through, through that whole course of time. So um, for him to still want to be a part of this and, you know, um, want to be around us during that time, you know, means a lot and shows how much he loves us and shows how much he loves his program. And, you know, to be able to help him, you know, get his school um, back into this position is, is, is dope. Have you seen any signs of, has he talked at all about it? Has he shown it all? That. I know, you know, and you know, um, we know, we know what's going on, and you know, 
out of respect for him, you know, we've tried our hardest to just make it about basketball. Um, and that's what he wants. You know, he doesn't want to think about, I know for me, I wouldn't want to think about losing my brother at all. I would just want to think about putting the ball in the net, being around my guys. So that's what, you know, what we've, in, we've embodied and that's, that's the, you know, the way we're going to carry ourselves and carry, try to, try to make sure that basketball is, is the outlet for him. Right here on the left. Justin, why could this team be fit for a run in March Madness? <clears throat> Um, just our, our, our versatility uh, on both ends, uh, offense and defense, uh, our ability to switch, um, and our, our, our talent on our roster. I, I just feel comfortable with our guys, and I think we got a close group, and um, you know we, we just want to keep competing, and uh, I don't think we're ready for our season to be over yet. Yeah, follow up. For any of you, uh, you know, whoever would like to, what, what have you guys seen thus far in your prep for Arizona State? Shamari, can you answer that? You take that much more. Oh, I mean, they uh, they stay very uh, similar to us. So I mean, we just uh, we just gotta play our game on both ends of the floor. I mean, just uh, let our defense be our best offense. Here in a uh, by the pillar, <clears throat> Roger Rubin from Newsday, again, <laughs> Shimori. Uh, you've, I mean, you're a young man, but you've already played in a lot of very big and important basketball games you know, in, in high school too, and in college. How does this compare with the biggest ones that you've played in? What's, what's a close comparison? Uh, well, for me, I'll say this is the, the I mean, the biggest. Because uh, well, now and never, it's like, it's either win or go home. And uh, like Justin said, like, we're not ready for our season to be over. So, I mean, we just want to uh, play to as long as we can. Shamari, to, to follow up. Uh, a year ago, you were uh, thinking about weighing your options. You were thinking about maybe not coming back to St. John's. When you reflect back on it, uh, what are your thoughts about your decision to do so, to, to come back? What does that mean to you now? Uh, I mean, this is one of the main reasons here. I mean, being here, I mean, this is, my, this, when I think of college basketball, this is what I dreamed of. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. You're in the back on the right. Rod is on Spectrum Networks. Just the last couple of days here since you found out you're going to be in the tournament. Uh, has Coach shared any of his time uh, in the NCAA tournament and kind of reflected it all? Or uh, what's been his message to you about playing in the tournament here tomorrow night? Shimori? Uh, Coach haven't really, uh, he haven't really like took us back. But I mean, I, I definitely think uh, his experience uh, definitely uh, feeds, off, feeds off on us. So I mean, we just, uh, I mean, we just we here to win games. Right here on the right. And this is for anybody. Uh, growing up, uh, and even in recent years, were you all fans of, of March Madness? And, and, and when, you, when, you, when, when you think back on it, what sticks out in your mind? What's the most memorable March Madness you ever saw? Start with Shimori. Uh, I say, uh, uh, Villanova winning the championship, not the last year, but when uh, Chris uh, Jenkins hit the buzzer beat on me, I feel like, uh, why would I not want to be there? Justin? <clears throat> um, when I, when I, growing up, I had a good friend that played for San Diego State, so uh, I would watch them play, uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to watch them play. Uh, they played Arizona in Anaheim. Uh, excuse me, did they play Arizona? UConn in Anaheim, uh, so I watched that game, and uh, I always wanted to be a part of the March Madness. Um, and my freshman year, I didn't get a chance to play. So uh, I'm glad uh, I'm back back here today. Marvin? Uh, for me, um, when I was you know younger growing up, uh, just watching the one shining moment, uh, the one shining moment clips, man. And uh, you know, having your little, I don't know, little moment uh, that to me, that's, that's something that I just always wanted to be a part of. And um, you know, I also grew up watching older guys play, you know, that would come back home and share their memories. So, um, it's, it's just like, why, why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? Why wouldn't you want to leave, you know, leave your legacy or leave your mark on a, on a program? Mustafa? Pretty much, <clears throat> pretty much the same thing. Piggyback off of what they said, just going up, watching all my favorite college players. Um, Marvin messed up my bracket my senior year of high school. <clears throat> but we're here to get it back for him. <laughs> Any further questions? All right, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Uh, we will be joined by Chris Mullen, the head coach of St. John's, at 110.
Good. How are you? Good. All right. Questions for Coach Mullen. Right here on the right. Chris, what are you enjoying about your first NCAA tournament as a coach? Got a good night's sleep last night. I enjoyed that. Um, I just think the excitement, I think the ride over, the guys are excited to be here. They got a good feel about what they've accomplished. And, uh, you know, we had good practice yesterday, and everything else was pretty much status quo. Here on the right. Mark Herman from Newsday. Chris, the guys seem to get immediately, they get over that whole, uh, you know, we're, we're the last team in. Uh, how does that not matter to them? That the fact that you know that, that they were the 68th choice out of the uh, 68. Well, because actually it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the fact that it matters. It does not matter. Um, so it's kind of quite um, factual, and uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a true new beginning. Number one, number 17, what is it, 16, 12. There's no advantage. You got to go out and play good basketball. You play good basketball. You move on. You don't. Your season's over. Um, I mean, different experiences. You know. I've, I was part of a team that was the last team in the NBA playoffs and the last day of the season. And we upset the number one team with the most wins in the NBA. So it truly does not matter. And that's, you don't have to make that up. That's not something you have to tell stories about. That's, that's the fact. Right here in the aisle. Mike McCarra, New York Post. Chris, can you talk about the first time you watched some Shimori play? And when you, when you think back at that time, could you see him develop into what he's become? Or is it even surprised you? what he's been able to become as a college player. Yeah, I, mean, I watched Shamari quite a bit uh, in, the, in the AU circuit. Uh, but I, do, I remember distinctly watching his city championship game at Madison Square Garden. 
and um, he played a great game. I remember sitting there like, wow, this is, this is going to be tough to figure this kid out to play, you know, with other good players and, and high level competition. So I think that's a great question, Mike, because I think it's underrated how f much he's improved. Um, he's obviously had three incredible seasons, you know, historically with his numbers and his stats. Uh, but his improvement, I think, has been overlooked from his strength, uh, his playmaking, his defense has improved. Um, and I think he's, you know, one of not, not many players can really influence the game in, in a, lot, a lot of different ways like he does. He doesn't have to score to influence the game. Um, and he draws so much attention that just being on the floor, he makes his teammates better. Yeah, sure, follow up. When, when, when he's playing at his best, um, what does that do for the other players? I mean, is, is he, he seems to be the kind of player that, especially when he's playing in his A game, can really make other players better and can make what you do more reasonably, you know, you can actually do that stuff because of what he's able to do. Is that a pretty accurate representation of, of what he is? Yeah, that's right on. And I think and, and to another level when he's really, you know, playing at, 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 a, at a fast pace and, and really attacking off the dribble, um, that adds a whole other dimension. Him, him being on the floor, he attracts attention. But when he's come off pick and rolls and, and really, you know, making a concerted effort to get to the paint and playing downhill, he collapses the defense and, and really, you know, creates nice opportunities for his teammates. Uh, here in the front, on the right. Doug Howler with The Athletic. Chris, th there's an idea that coaches who have played at the highest level often struggle as coaches because they can't get their players to dedicate themselves the way they dedicated themselves as players growing up. Have you? Had, do you agree with that? Have you had any challenges with that during your time as coach at St. John's? Yeah, you know, I wasn't quite that high level player to really judge other people. You know, really. So from from this stand, from my, from where I sit, I'm always really trying to um, sometimes pass on my experiences if it's appropriate. More importantly, I was just talking to Austin Crozier. More importantly, I, I reference a lot of coaches that I played for and things that they did to help me. Um, you know, I played with Austin at the Pacers, and I, and I was, I, and I do reference Larry Bird a lot to my guys because I, I do think sometimes we get caught up in wins and losses. And Larry was one of the coaches that would actually tell us how we played. And there were games we played really well and lost, and he would be okay with it. And games we played, you know, really bad and won, and would be honest with that. So I really try and, you know, just pass on on different uh, things to help our guys. You know, from Coach Carnesecca always. Um, yeah, so it hasn't been tough. Look, you, th those things come up when you lose, right? This, but it's not because you're a good player. You want to win the game. So you're trying to fix those things, you know, to play better the next game. That's really where my focus comes from. Right here on the right, in the back. Oh, you, sorry, right here. Go ahead, sorry. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Chris, uh, you mentioned Coach Carnesecca. We know that you guys are in touch. Have you had conversations with him about bringing a team to an NCAA tournament? Has there been any wisdom that he's given you? Can you tell us a little bit about conversations with him? I spent, I, I was, what was I coming from the other night? <clears throat> yeah, I, I passed through Queens the other night on our off day, I think it was Friday, and I went, up, I went to his house. I spent two hours with him. We didn't talk anything about basketball, but he did pass on a lot of wisdom. Um, Look, he, I went to four tournaments with him, watched him um, handle all different type situations. You know, the four years I played for him, uh, probably more importantly, um, how he's handled his players, um, their families. Um, so the, day I, the, the night I spent with him, he was telling me about his high school friends. He told me there was five, there's only four left, and we're still in touch. So we sat for two hours. He was telling me stories about the old east side, his father's fruit stand on 62nd and 2nd Avenue. And, um, but there's not a whole lot he needs to tell me because you know, I, I experienced a lot with him. I watched everything he did. I listened, you know, most, most of those stories I tell are very, uh, not only relevant, but clear in my mind. And, um, and that's what I referenced. It's passing that knowledge, um, that care. Um, just passing that stuff on to, to the next generation. That's how I really look at it. I'm really just here to 
to guide these kids. Of course, I want them to play well. I want them to look good. I want them to win. But it's also passing on the knowledge and um, and mentoring them like like I was. That's what that's what people did for me. You here in the middle. Chris, what's the emotion been like walking into the arena today compared to when you did it as a player? Are there any parallels between playing in the tournament and now coaching in the tournament with St. John's? I think the parallel is, is the renewed excitement. You know, um, I, th I had four different experiences. You know, you know, one, I thought my second year we were, had probably a really good chance to really um, move along deep into the tournament. And my last year, we did move along. The other two years, we were similar to this team, just getting in there and trying to figure your way through it. Um, so I think the, 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 the excitement of a new season is, is there. Um, I haven't been in the arena yet, so I can't answer that part. Um, yeah, but I think the, the excitement and newness, this was a new experience for me, sitting in that room, and Mike, you and, and Roger were there, watching those kids, like that authentic, you know, explosion of emotion. I hadn't seen that. I've watched it on TV before, but I never sat in a room like that. Um, I guess similar to I've seen kids in the draft room and the different uh, emotions that go through that. The kids getting picked early, maybe kids not getting picked. Um, so to stand there, I was in the back and just to watch that, that, that was a new experience for me at 55. So that was, that was, that was cool. Here in the back and the right. Chris, do you, you and Bobby have any kind of a relationship? He obviously, you know, is grew up in, in the area and played in the area until he went to Duke. Did you, do you guys know each other? At yeah, all? I know the Hur Hurley family very well. His dad, obviously a Hall of Fame coach at St. Anthony's. So I, I've known him since I was in high school. Um, Bobby, I met personally at the at Dream Team at the workouts when he was playing for the select team. And his brother Dan I know as well. So I, I know that family very well. It's, uh, you know, basketball royalty of New Jersey. And uh, they just love the game of basketball. They teach it. They uh, are very intense. And it's, it's a, uh, you know, the whole family is involved. And I've I known them for a long time. What's that? No, I'm the only idiot that decide to coach in my family. <laughs> right here in the middle. Chris, I, I, we all know how much the, the, the colors and that St. John's logo mean to you. Just what, is it, what does it mean to have St. John's in this tournament? What does it mean to you personally to have this school in the, in the tournament? Yeah, well, you know, in my mind, we're supposed to be here every year. It, it's gotten tougher. It has. It's gotten harder to, to get, get into this tournament. Um, yeah, but to be, you know, was it 353 Division One schools, somewhere around there, and to, to be one of 68, we're proud of that. And we want to continue to do that, but also we want to, while we're here, represent ourselves with class, dignity, and humility. Here in the front. <clears throat> Chris, you brought up the, the dream team uh, scrimmages in San Diego. I was just going to ask what were your impressions of, of Bobby during those sessions? Yeah, he played great. He, he played really, really well. I, I, think, I think I'm on tape. One, one of the sessions, look, that was a long time ago, so. <laughs> but. Uh, a lot of those guys, and Bobby being maybe the, the, at the top of the list, really helped his status among NBA executives because he played really, really well against, well, you know who he was playing against. <laughs> and, uh, and I think they all used that and fueled it uh, when they went back to school and or entered the draft. But he was, he was, a, uh, he was a leader. You know, he was, he was one of those guys that always overachieved played hard as nails and, and did whatever it took to win. Made his teammates better. Here now. Chris, I know you've joked for years about how, you know, when you try and, if, if you were to try and sell yourself as, as Mr. St. John's, the kid's parents would probably know who you are more than they would just because of time, time passes. But when you do try and sell your, your part of the program to, to recruits, what, what do you think interests them most? Your, 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 your time as a player, your time as a coach, your time as an executive? What do you think of, of those things? What do you think for a kid, if you were in their place, what, would, mm -hmm. what, what do you think would, would appeal to them most about going to play for you? That's a good question. I, th I think it's a combination of all, Mike. I think these kids, are, they're very intelligent. Um, they have access to all, all information, past, present, and sometimes even in the future, if they read your guys' stuff. <laughs> um, 
I think it's I think it's everything. I can, I mean I can go back um, when Coach Conasecki recruited me. I the fact that he coached in in the, in the pros was intriguing to me. I like that. So I think um, look a lot of these kids. That's their dream, right? And, and you want to do everything you can to fulfill that dream with, with the insurance plan of education and degree. But I think having um, experiences across the board, I think helps. And then look, there's, in this day and age, there's so many transfers. I think the, the kids hopefully are getting a little smarter and, and emphasizing the right thing, right? So the, what they're gonna study, style of play, are you going to get along with the coach, not just listen to me? Is this someone you can, you know, form a bond with and trust and, and feel, good, feel good about playing for? So I think all those things are important. Any further? Yep, right here. Not only for the guys who are here now, but <clears throat> what does it do for some kid who's maybe thinking about where he's going to go to college just to see you guys in this tournament? Yeah, so, so the exposure is something you can't even – you, you can't find that anywhere, right? So it's, um, people start finding, where's St. John's, you know, and, and they watch kids play, they associate with some player maybe, Shamari Pons, they want to be the next Shamari Pons, the next Mustafa Heron, whatever that might be. And that's, this, this stage um, provides something that you can't get anywhere else, you know, so, the, so that uh, the big stage, the, the uh, just the fact that we're out there and, and you know so many people watching and that, that's that's a that's a huge huge thing for the school so you got one you good any further questions coach mullen chris thank you good thank luck you. tomorrow night thanks uh, we will be joined by student athletes from arizona state at 135 just about 10 minutes
Hey. All right, we're now being joined by a couple of student athletes from Arizona State, Remy Martin and Zylan Cheatham. Uh, questions for the guys? Right here in the aisle. Doug Howard, The Athletic. <laughs> Remy, just can you give us an update on just how you feel and um, maybe just from the game on last week to now, just how that progression has been? <clears throat> um, it's been very well. I mean, um, you know, John, our tremendous trainer, has been doing very good um, working on me and um, getting me ready for tomorrow. Um, today we took a light practice. You know, I'm, I'm on the court and um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. We're in March Madness. I'm healthy. I'll be healthy when I get on the court. Um, and I'm just here to help my team win, but I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good. I mean, took it light today, felt nice, and um, ready, I'll be ready for tomorrow. Here in the aisle, back right. I have one for each, but just to follow up with that, uh, just the way that you came back on, on Friday and obviously pushed through when you, you weren't 100%. Can you just talk about how much it means to you um, regardless to be on the court with your guys? Yeah, it means a lot to me. It means, you know, the world just to go out there and compete and play the game that I love, but also for my brothers, you know. I know that, you know, they want me on the court, and I just did whatever I could to uh, – nothing will stop me. Um, we're too late in the season. We're in March Madness now. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can to uh, help this team. Um, but I'll do whatever I can. This, this is it's now March. It's winner, loser, go home, and, you know, we're here to stay. NCAA tournament, did you, have you leaned on any teammates that have, might have been here, or coach, or just maybe even a different mentor to give you any advice or guidance on, on just being on the stage? <clears throat> uh, considering how much tournament I've watched just uh, over my five years of college and uh, my, pretty much my whole life, uh, I mean, it almost seems to a certain extent like you've been here. So, um, like I said, I mean, I've talked to, I've talked to my guys. Uh, I got to experience it with them last year, uh, not actually here, but I was in constant communication with them. Uh, I've reached out to some of my former teammates, uh, Malik Pope, uh, some of those guys, just to kind of get a feel for uh, how they went about uh, approaching each day. And uh, everything's been pretty consistent as far as uh, effort and just maximizing each moment you are on the floor. And I'm just I'm extremely grateful to be here. Here on the right. For both of you guys, what, what is what is Bobby's best quality as a coach? Alan, can you answer that first? Oh, me first. Oh, uh, my fa my personal favorite thing about him is just the way he relates to us from a player standpoint. Uh, obviously, he played at the highest level. He's done things that uh, we want to accomplish as players. So uh, he relates to us. He knows when uh, when to, to to turn it up and, and expect more of you, and when to put his arm around you, and you know. Uh, comforts you to a certain extent. So um, he's just a very relatable guy. Uh, even practice-wise, he knows when he's going too hard. When uh, oh man, if I when I was playing, I know I would be tired in this in this case. So uh, he knows how to tailor things like that. And uh, I mean, he's he's changed my life to be honest. So I, I love him as a, a coach and player. Remy. Yeah, same here. I mean, everything, everything, um, whatever I need, you know, on and off the court. Um, it's not only about basketball with him. It's how you're doing, um, you know, outside your, your your basketball life. And, you know, he's just a, you know, he's a, he relates to us, you know. And I'm a point guard. He was a point guard. He's done everything that I want to do in my life. So um, what better guy to have but him? Right here to right. Zylan, you referred to this, but I'll ask both of you. Uh, uh, growing up and throughout your life, you watched March Madness. Uh, what is it about it that, that really appeals to you? And what are your favorite moments from having watched it all your lives? I think uh, what makes this, this so special is, um, I mean, everyone has a season. There's 300 some odd teams in the Division One level uh, that have a season, but not everyone gets to go to this event. Um, I mean, there's a select few uh, hand-picked teams that get to go to this event and uh, that in itself is special but just the competitive atmosphere uh, everybody's pretty much fighting for their lives it's almost like a Fortnite Hunger Games type of thing it's just it's an unbelievable experience um, uh, a special moment to me I recall watching uh, that UConn game and just seeing Kimball Walker 
uh, that that whole conference tournament leading into uh, the NCAA tournament, just that whole run was just – it was unbelievable. And uh, I can recall vividly the shots he made, uh, just some of the moments he had. So I'd, I'd probably say that. Remy? Um, one of my moments was just last year, um, being my freshman year, um, how we were watching, you know, Selection Sunday and just seeing our name – um, up there and everybody, especially Coach Hurley, jumped in a pool um, and had a good time. So as a freshman, you know, coming into this, uh, you know, school and being able to experience that your first year with seniors that, um, you know, overachieved and definitely, you know, worked as, ha worked as hard as they could and learning from them, like, it was an amazing uh, experience for me, learning, and now we're here again. Right here on the right. Can you guys just talk about what this last 24 hours has been like since you got on the bus and came out to Dayton? Has it been just a lot of refocusing on the game, or have you, are you playing some games with each other to kind of, you know, some card games or something that you brought to kind of, you know, ease the mind? Or what's kind of been this 24 hours like? Remy, can you answer that first? Um, 24 hours has been fun. I mean, just being able to, to know that our season's still alive while, you know, some. Unfortunately, some other schools are are not playing, but um, you know, we're just we're, we're focused. We're definitely we're definitely focused, but we're enjoying the moment. Um, we're enjoying every moment that we have with him. I'm definitely enjoying every moment I have with this guy right here. Um, it's his last year, so um, everything has been smooth, fun. But you know, we also know what we came here to do. Alan, uh, dating back to Selection Sunday, uh, I'd say it's pretty much been a roller coaster ride emotionally for me um, to kind of have some uncertainty not really knowing if you're going to get in, not really knowing how you're going to go out. And then uh, to, to get selected, obviously that was a, a joyful moment. And then to just kind of get back to earth and, and realize, like, okay, it's time to work. It's time to make this moment even more special. So uh, pretty much kind of like to piggyback off of what Remy said. I mean, it was a, it's a very jo joyful experience, but we're really focused and, and ready for the next step. Right here, right? Both of you again. Can you see an advantage of, of being here, playing in the first four? You, you don't have to wait till Thursday or Friday. What, what's the advantage of that? I'll answer that first. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, some people would look at it as not the most ideal situation, but I mean, we find positive in every situation, and uh, to to be here and have that quick turnaround uh, it doesn't give us time to rest. It doesn't give us time to kind of, I mean, lose our sharpness to a certain extent. And uh, we're going to we're gonna try to turn that into an advantage for us as far as uh, coming off of a, a really good game in Oregon. I mean, obviously we lost, but uh, we played really well. Uh, we, we competed really hard, and uh, we want to try to carry those type of qualities over into this tournament. And uh, with this quick tournament, turnaround, I think it's going to be a lot better for us. Remy? Yeah, definitely. Just looking at the positive things, I mean, like I said, other teams are not playing right now. So, um, like like you said, just look at the positive and everything. Literally, I mean, we're happy. We're having fun. Any further questions? All right, Remy, Zalan, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night, guys. We will be joined by the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, Bobby Hurley, at 1:55.
All right, now we're joined by the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, Bobby Hurley. Uh, Bobby, if you like, you make an opening statement. If not, we'll open the floor for questions. Yeah. Well, you travel, everything was smooth, and just uh, everyone's very welcoming, and we're just you know thrilled to be in the NCAA tournament and had a great, uh, great practice earlier this morning and just really, really geared up to play. Questions for Coach Hurley? Yep, right here on the right. Roger Rubin from New York Newsday. Roger. Uh, when you guys won and got into the NCAA tournament uh, last year, in what ways did it change the program? In what ways did people see you guys differently? Well, I think any time that you, you haven't consistently gone to the NCAA tournament, it's, it becomes a little bit unexpected. And, and, uh, but now for the players who were in the program last year, they went to the tournament, they experienced it. Going into this year, that's you know that's on our list, our goals to 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 make the tournament again, and that's what you know our guys expected to do going into the season. So it it kind of sets the tone and the standard for you know what you're trying to do. Yeah, I mean our our. Uh, you know, our program is, is pretty energized at the moment. I think people are, are, are very enthusiastic about, you know, what we're building and, uh, and where uh, the direction of the program is going. Our, our attendance numbers were, you know, outstanding again this year at home. And uh, there's great enthusiasm in our community about the team. And I think we have an exciting team. We're, uh, you know, a fun team to watch. And, you know, our, our community has really, you know, gotten behind what we're doing. And, you know, we're recruiting better. We, you know, we have, uh, we're bringing in some talented guys and, you know, we're, uh, Arizona State basketball is, you know, is pretty relevant. We'll be here front right and then the left. Doug Haller with The Athletic. <clears throat> um, Bobby, you mentioned before you left that you broke out the old highlight tapes of your final four runs with Duke. What, what were your, what was your message behind that and when, when did you do it exactly? I, I, yeah, that was a while ago. We didn't play well in one of our games, and and I forget which game it was. Um, it, it was you know some some games that you play this year feel like they they happened last season. You know, uh, as as you stay in the moment all the time. Um, but we didn't play well. I wanted to remind them of you know what you can accomplish and you know how that changes your life if if you could achieve and. Uh, get yourself to the point where you have an opportunity to play in the tournament. But if you're not playing well enough in your regular season, then you're not going to you know, have that chance that that all 68 teams have right now. And you know, I was able to to capitalize and and be on some great teams that that cut down the nets. And I told the guys it's it's open doors for me in in the game of basketball that that probably wouldn't have been open otherwise. You're here on the left. Bobby, a lot of people were surprised when you took the Arizona State job. How, how do you like it out there, and has it been kind of what you expected so far? Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I was familiar with the West Coast just from my playing days. I was out in Sacramento, so I mean, I obviously grew up in Jersey, but it's uh, there was a familiarity with with that area, and I just think the way that I coached, uh, I thought would would work in the Pac-12 in terms of the style of the conference. I. I view myself as a guy that likes to be somewhat creative on offense, and it's a league that, that is notorious for scoring points and getting up and down the floor and, and playing a faster style. It's not a league that's a rugged league that gets games get played in the 50s or something. So I just thought it was, it was a good fit for me. And um, I looked at it whereas, you know, you have the weather, you have, you know, a huge school, the second biggest school in the country. and. Uh, and just an opportunity to to tap into a place that has not really consistently, you know, been a winner year in and year out. And I thought that there was a lot that I could sell to recruits just with the Pac-12 and the way that the Pac-12 has turned out NBA talent, you know, over the last decade, and you know, just all the success that the league has had in the past. Are you happy with where the program is? Are you? Do you feel like you guys should be further along, or you're? past where you thought you would be? I mean, I, I thought we, we really had a breakthrough last year just with, you know, our non-conference and then, you know, getting, a, getting an opportunity to play in a tournament. And I think, you know, this year, I, 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 we went into this year talking about 
competing better in the conference. Like we have to do a better job in our league, and 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 I think we've taken another step in that direction. You know, just going 12 and six this year in the conference and finishing second and. Um, and, and so that was a goal of ours. So we're continuing to, to try and, you know, take steps as, as a program. And, you know, when you're in the NCAA tournament, we've, we've, you know, we've made it now back to back. I think, you know, the guys are, are enthusiastic to play tomorrow and, and, uh, and we're trying to advance and, and continue to play. Back right. Expect to get out of Remy Martin uh, coming off the injury, and, and how do you balance, uh, you know, the fact that you need to win to advance with the fact that he might need to play two, three games if you keep winning games? Yeah, good question. Uh, with, with Remy, it was disappointing because we were playing so well, you know, after the UCLA game in our league, and to have him uh, in the first two minutes of the game, you know, have have a, a little pull there in the groin, where uh, you know he was fractionally you know the player that that he normally would be in terms of his movement he still is a warrior and stayed in there and and stuck some shots against Oregon but uh you know we needed him to be himself uh in order to beat Oregon Oregon's playing at a high level right now so um but but he's had a few days and and he's got after it in treatment and we had our our meat and potatoes practice this morning like and he was he was moving great and and he was in every drill so we, we anticipate he'll be He'll be ready to go tomorrow. Back left here. Jared Fialco from WRAL TV. Just curious, you got one school from Durham, North Carolina in the building already. Wondering how much contact you still have with the other more prominent school from that area. And what, if any, advice Mike Shashevsky gives you nowadays? I've 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 talked to coach at, at times, especially uh, you know, when I was at Buffalo, there was there was a good uh, a good uh, story there with uh, with us going into the, the conference tournament, it was my second year as a head coach, and my first year we lost in the first round. and And I wanted to ask Coach, "Hey, how do you? What are you going to do this week? You know, as you prepare for the ACC tournament, and you know, I need to win my tournament to go to the NCAA's." And uh, and Coach said, "Hey, you know what? I, I would be, do very limited live work with your players. The last thing you need is for someone to get hurt. You got to keep your team fresh. You got to stick to the to the drills that you practice, but try and avoid, you know, live reps." So as I'm going and getting ready for, for our game, I can't resist but to think that we, we may not be sharp enough. So I got to get my live reps. So I have our guys going you know, more live than I probably should. And my, my player of the year in the conference drives to his right hand and, and rolls his ankle. And, and now he's laying on the sideline. And, and then he's in a boot. And uh, he's probably you know, 30 40% of what he normally would be, the kid Justin Moss. And, uh, but the rest of the guys had his back and, and, and picked him up and, and got us to, uh, to, you know, to the MAC championship that year. But you know, I, I need to listen better to people that know a lot more than I do. <laughs> Here, front right. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Being, growing up where you did, uh, what did you and your buddies think of St. John's? And you know, what, what did St. John's mean to you? And, and when you think of St. John's, what comes to mind? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, when I was growing up, you know, that's when I kind of fell in love with basketball. I was a college basketball fan, a Big East fan, and I remember those matchups with with Chris Mullen and Walter Berry and Mark Jackson, and they'd be going against Pearl Washington, and I was a point guard. And I'd seen those guys go at each other, or you know, Georgetown and, and St. John's, and all these great matchups. And I remember the uh, you know all the Final Fours, you know, all those Big East teams, you know, going and Villanova. You know, beating uh, Georgetown and just you know, so many great memories of uh, you know of watching the Big East and and watching St. John's and Chris Mullen. Back in the right in the aisle. Cheers, since you sell KPNX. Um, just going off of that, what is your relationship like with Chris Mullen? And I know when you when you've been in basketball long enough, you kind of had connections with everybody. But Chris Mullen, possibly Buffalo. Do you enjoy kind of facing teams or? or coaches that, that you have connections to? I mean, I just think it's, it's more about the players. For me, it's like more about like Zylan Cheatham and, and Lou Dort getting his first NCAA tournament experience and, and Remy Martin, who just is such a winner and he just he wants to play in this event. Like the other stuff is not as meaningful. Like I have the utmost respect for Chris and the job he's done to get St. John's the NCAA tournament and who he was as a player, he's a guy I always looked up to like when I was growing up in Jersey and he was, he was playing at St. John's and then on to the NBA and got a chance to play against him in, in the dream team uh, when I was on the development team. So, 
a lot of good memories, you know, with, with, uh, with, that, with regard to Chris. Right here, front left. <clears throat> he remembers you playing very well uh, in those workouts with the Dream Team. He thinks it really helped you, you know, for, for in terms of the NBA draft. What do you remember about those, you know, going up against, you know, that team yeah. and just kind of what your relationship is with Chris? Yeah, so it was the best week of my life. You know, as a competitor and, a, and as a basketball player, you want to be, you want to face like the best players that you can. And they, and they were all in, in one gym for a week. And, and you got to see like what, what, it kind of elevated me maybe to play the best that I've, I've ever played in my life just because of how good they were. And, and then how hard I trained to go there because I was scared to death that, that I was gonna get embarrassed. So, you're, so you, you really train and you get yourself ready and then you know, all of a sudden you know, you're right in that game. And, it's, it's, uh, and then to have like Penny Hardaway and, and Chris Webber and Grant Hill on your team, it, it, it made things a little easier for me. Allen Houston hit a few threes for us too. So our development team was was strong. I mean, we 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 were young, but you know, really talented. Back right. I was going to ask you about that as well, but I'll switch gears a little bit. Can you imagine kind of being in his shoes and the emotional roller coaster of losing a brother and then getting your alma mater into the tournament like he has for the first time here, and what that must be like for a coach to go through that? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really you know heartbreaking, and you know you it's. Uh, you know, but Chris is strong, and he's you know been through a lot, and and I'm sure he's uh, he's got the leadership to handle it. And I think he knows, uh, you know, that as, as bad as he might feel and what he's going through, that that he owes it to uh, you know the kids that he coaches to to get his team ready and and get him to uh, to enjoy this moment. He was a part of so many special moments as a player, going to Final Four and just being one of the great all-time greats in, in the Big East. So I'm sure he wants his players to, to experience that as well. You want your front right? <clears throat> Bobby, there's an idea that, <clears throat> play, that coaches who played at a high level uh, st may struggle because they can't bring out <clears throat> that work ethic in, the, in the, today's kids. Have you, in your experience, have you, has that been a challenge for you at all to get kids to work maybe to the level that you worked as a player? I just, I, I feel like when, when I played, I, I maybe overachieved and, and you know, I had, People doubted me most of my career, and I, I had to, I had to work at it. I was fortunate to grow up in a household that, that you know, was a, a legendary coach that you know, I had access to every day, and and uh, to direct me and give me the light, the right ways to practice. But you know, he pushed my dad pushed me and and developed a work ethic in me to to achieve what I achieved on the floor. So I know that that's you, you can't be a you can't be a success, and you can't take the game as, as far as a lot of the guys that you coach want to take it if you don't have that, that drive and that work ethic. So, uh, you know, we, we try and, we try and uh, you know, through evaluation, see guys that, that, that want to get better, that want to work, and, uh, and are serious about, about the game. And we try and identify that when we recruit guys and bring them into the program. Right here on the right. Roger Rubin from New York Newsday. Uh, Bobby, as a person who cared about basketball growing up in the greater New York area, how would you describe what St. John's meant to the New York basketball scene as a whole? Yeah, I mean, you just remember just how electric, you know, the garden was, you know, in, in, in those matchups and just, uh, it was it was on par with with uh, you know the Knicks at the time. You know it's just it was going to Final Fours and you know they and Coach Conaseca had you know so much charisma with how he coached and you know it was just uh, it was a fun team to watch. They were a very exciting brand of basketball. Right here, right. I know this it's a quick turnaround and all, but is there a a, a positive about coming here to play in the first four or instead of waiting till Thursday or Friday to play? Well, I mean, I mean I'm, con I'm considering. I mean, maybe I should go and meet with a realtor and, and, and maybe look to buy a house here because I'm, I'm here, you know, a couple of years now. So that's, I might do that later today um, if I have time. But, you know, it's, it's just to be here. It doesn't, I, t I told our, our media uh, yesterday, it's uh, send me anywhere. Send us anywhere. It's the NSA tournament. We just we want an opportunity, you know, to compete and, and win games. I, I just I love how my team is playing down the stretch. We've uh, 
you know, we've won six out of eight. Our only two losses were to Oregon, who's really found something and playing at a high level. So um, I, I know these guys are hungry to, to get out on the floor and, and compete. Right here on the left, you still got one. What, what worries you about St. John's, Bobby? What, what do they do that could give you guys problems? Yeah, I mean, they're somewhat similar to, to my team last year in, in a lot of ways. They just, like, really got guys who could go off the bounce and, and attack the paint, and they have shooting, and they're very interchangeable, you know, just uh, they, they switch a lot of stuff on defense, so, and they're very scrappy. They, 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 they really have a, a New York way about, you know, just, you know, being a little undersized, but, 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 you know, figuring out how to get the job done, and and then they have you know dynamic uh, a dynamic player and in ponds and um, you know and and toughness. Clark's tough guy and and Heron and you know so they uh, you know we got to really take care of the basketball. It's something that, that we were we've been talking about because of how good St. John's could be in the open court if if you turn it over. Does that, Does that help you? The fact that they're like your team last year. It's not like you're facing. Something you're not familiar with? It just because they, they have so many guys on the floor that could hurt you from a distance and away from the basket. That's where the the you know the preparation and thinking about how you're going to defend the team like St. John's because they are very unique and uh, so that that's where the dilemma is for us is you know with their size and guys that could could penetrate and also shoot like how are we going to consistently and, su and successfully guard them for 40 minutes? Any further questions for Coach Hurley? Bobby, thank you for your time. Right, guys, Good luck tomorrow you. night. Thank you.